darkness, a light has dawned. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. He shall reign forevermore. That's our next song. It might sound a bit new to you, so when you're ready, join in. When you feel comfortable, let's stand.
take a seat. Uh, second Bible reading is from Luke chapter 2. We're starting at verse 1 through to 7. Okay, if you've got a pew Bible, it's on page 935. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's great to have you here with us this morning. And now it's time for the kids talk. So if you're a kid, could you please come down the front? Because I'm going to need your help today. So come on down, kids. Come on down. Yeah, I know who you are. Okay, now I need some volunteers who are going to be able to hold some things up for me. All right, so an angel, come up to the top level. Uh, some shepherds. I need someone who can hold up a baby. Someone hold up a baby. Yes, you can hold up a baby. Thank you. Um, someone to hold up some wise men. Some wise men. Someone to hold up Joseph, Joseph, someone to hold up Mary, would you be happy to hold up Mary? Okay. Yeah, oh, you've got Thomas as well. Okay, come up to the top, and then someone to hold up a trumpet. Would you be able to hold up a trumpet? All right, and all the other people, I have some for you as well. So another angel, who'd like an angel? An angel, and some shepherds. And a baby, and some more wise men, and a Joseph. You just hold the Joseph, you can hold it up sometime. And a, a, a try, okay, here we go. So, so, we've got these different signs here. So, when I say your sign in the story, I want you to hold it up so that everyone can see. Now, adults, you'll notice that there are words which are written on there. And whenever you hear these words for the particular sign, you have to say those sounds. So, when you hear angel, so you'll hold up angel and everyone will go, oh. All right, so everyone say, practice that again. One, two, three. Ah, that's it. All right, now, Mary. Who's got Mary? Who, where are the Marys? Okay, there's a Mary on a donkey. Is there another Mary on a donkey somewhere? Yes, there it is. Okay, so when you see Mary, you say, hello. Everyone together. One, two, three. Hello. That's it. All right, who's got Joseph? Where's a Joseph? Hold up a Joseph. So when you see Joseph, you say, hello. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Hello. All right. Who's got the shepherds? 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 There's the shepherds. Okay. When you hear the shepherds, you say, bah. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Bah. That's it. Now, when you see the baby, where's the baby? Hold up the baby. Okay. When you see the baby, when you hear the word baby, you say, oh. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, oh, that's it. And then the wise men. We've got some wise men here. Okay, when you see the wise men, you say, hmm. One, two, three. Hmm. 
And then finally, you'll see a king sign, which is the crown just there. And you hold up king, and when you hear king, you go... Ready? One, two, three. That's it. Okay, here we go. So, we're going to help the adults to remember the Christmas story with all of your prompts. So you're going to hold up your signs whenever you hear your word. So when you hear angel, when we hear angel, we say, Aww. Aww. when we hear Mary, we say, hello. When we see, hear Joseph, we say, hello. When we hear shepherds, we say, Bah. When we hear baby, we say, ah. Oh. When, <laughs> when we see wise, hear wise men, we say, hmm. And when we hear Trump king, we say, <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's have a go at this story. Here we go. The first Christmas began with a message. It was delivered by an angel <laughs> who appeared to Mary. Hello. He said, don't worry, you're going to have a baby. Oh, this did worry Mary. Hello. Because she wasn't married yet, but she got over it. It, <laughs> it surprised her boyfriend too, whose name was Joseph. Hello. He thought she had decided to have a baby oh, with someone else. But the angel oh, appeared to Joseph hello, to give him a message. Don't worry, the baby oh, is from God. It had nothing to do with Gerald down the street, who was always a bit dodgy. The angel said, uh, the angel oh, said to give the name Jesus to the baby. Oh. So Joseph... Hello, decided to marry Mary. Hello. Because of a technicality, they had to travel to the town of Bethlehem shortly after. It wasn't long before along came the baby. Oh. This caused much excitement in heaven, so much that it burst open and out came the angels. Oh. They had a message for some guys on the hill, the shepherds. Man. <laughs> Don't worry, the angel said, a new king, a good one, has arrived. He's a newborn baby, ah, oh, lying in a manger. So the shepherds went to see the baby, ah, oh, and Mary, hello, and Joseph, hello. Sometime later, a group of wise men, hmm from the east, arrived to see the baby oh, who had been born as king. And they worshipped him with gifts. So, whether you're a wise man hmm, or a lowly shepherd or a girl like Mary hello, or a boy like Joseph, hello, the message brought by the angels oh, is still for us today. He is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Because, of course, he had come to be with us. Not above us, not apart from us, but with us. God with us. That's what Christmas is about. Thank you for being with me down the front here. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for your help. We're going to watch a video now, which is a reminder of the fact that as people who celebrate Christmas, we're not just doing it here in Australia. We're celebrating with everyone around the world. And Christmas is an opportunity to remember God's gift to us and the fact that we can give a gift to people in other parts of the world too. So let's just take a moment. We're going to view this video. And then if you'd like to give towards our Christmas offering, this is what it's going to this year, and it'll be taken up in the next song. Thank you. 
What a nice night when Christ was born. Let's stand and sing a holy night. Oh, holy night, the stars are bright and shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the Spirit felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices was born oh night divine oh night oh night divine led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand led by the light of stars so sweetly gleaming he came the wise men from Orient land the King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials born to be our friend was born oh night divine oh night oh night divine truly he taught that we love one another his glory is love and his gospel is peace chains shall he break the slave is still our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name fall on your knees 
Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine. Oh, night when Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night. Please take a seat. Our third Bible reading, following Megan's reading, is on in Luke chapter 2, and we read from verse 8 to 16. It is found on page 935 in the Pew Bibles. Reading from verse 8, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. This is the word of God. Now, just before I bring you the sermon, I'm going to give you a chance to say Merry Christmas to the person next to you while I replug these guitar leads. Go. <laughs> Okay, so uh, before we start, I'm just going to take 10 minutes, but before we start, I just wanted to pray. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are mindful of your presence here with us, but we're also mindful of the presence of many people who won't be in church to celebrate or even with their families today because they're fighting fires. For those who are on properties where the drought has so affected them that the despair is so dark that it would be almost impossible to celebrate. Lord, we pray for our friends, we pray for family members, we pray for our fellow Australians at this time, for the things that we are going through. Lord, we remember that the first Christmas was a Christmas of joy, but it was joy in the midst of dark and troubled times. And so right now we look to you once again to be our saviour, to be the light of the world and to be our light as well today. Lord, help us to see you, help us to see each other, and help us to see the message that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Uh, many of you will know that a couple of years ago, my family and I lived in the UK for three years. We worked in a little church in a little village. And when we lived there, once we went out walking in a field. And when we went out into that field, we came across a well in that field just behind our house. And it was known as St. Rumbold's Well. Now, I thought that I wanted to share with you the story of St. Rumbold because it's quite extraordinary. Apparently, he was born in 662. He lived for three days and is said to have been so miraculously filled with Christian piety that he was able to speak from the moment of his birth, which, as a mother, would be very disturbing. <laughs> he professed his faith. He received baptism. He delivered a sermon prior to his death and several churches across the UK are dedicated to him. And this Christmas time, it made me think, why didn't Jesus do exactly the same thing? When he came and that little baby arrived, why didn't he start speaking straight away? I mean, he's God. Why did he wait 30 years before he became public to everyone? Why not? In fact, it, you know, that's a little bit disturbing, the idea of a baby being carried around to speak to people. So perhaps God could have just appeared. Jesus could have arrived as a fully formed human and walked out of the wilderness and spoke to people. But that's not how it works. That's not the Christmas story. Christmas starts with a birth. It starts with a birth and then an infancy and then moves on to a childhood and an adolescence and a young adulthood, until finally he's an adult. And then around age 30, he goes public and speaks to everyone. But why? Why delay? Why wait 30 years before he actually started doing this stuff? Partly, I think it's to do with God's tender and incessant love for children. That's one of the things that we see throughout the Bible, and particularly in the life of Jesus. Because what Jesus is on about is not just about adults. What Jesus is on about is for kids too. It's for everyone. God didn't come as an adult, nor did he come as a super baby with the power of the force to collect his own dummies off the table. He came as an ordinary baby, an ordinary child with the same limitations as us. He was put away in a manger and some crying he certainly did make. But the life of God is just as compatible for a nine-day-old as it is for a 19-year-old as it is for a 90-year-old. And why is that? How is that? Because Jesus was not coming to earth to establish complex religious teachings. He was not establishing an institutional church. He was actually about a world order not a religious order. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 14, we read this. The angel said to those shepherds, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Now, not many of us realise this, but those words, those words are empire talk. They are official empire, Roman empire talk. These are the words that are very similar to that described to the, the, to the described Caesar Augustus's birthday on the 6th of BC, 6 BC. There's this engraving in Turkey that says, Hear the gospel, Caesar is your saviour. It was actually announcing something that we call today the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. And yet, on Jesus's birthday, engraved in the sky, Guy, at a similar time as Caesar Augustus was celebrating his birthday, came these words. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
the angelic messages were announcing the Pax Christus, the peace of Christ. But the thing is, there's nothing religious about it. For Jesus, there was no sacred or secular. For Jesus, it was just life. Listen again to what Jesus said in his manifesto called the Sermon on the Mount. Don't just avoid murder, avoid hate. It'll eat you up. Don't just avoid sexual indiscretion, avoid lust. It'll control you. Don't just avoid violence, love your enemy and do good to those who curse you. Don't be ruled by your desire for material stuff or you'll find that it starts to rule you. Do you notice what Jesus doesn't say? What Jesus doesn't say, he doesn't tell people to wear certain robes or to strike a particular pose when they pray or to sing or to chant something. There's a distinct lack of religious instruction. Jesus is not speaking to Jews or Christians. He's speaking to people. He's speaking to human beings. And he's not speaking to them about life after death. He's speaking to them about life, full stop. Life now and into the future. By living among us, Jesus showed that what he was on about was not something that you have to join some kind of monastery for. Jesus is not trying to take people out of the world. What he's wanting to do is to bring people into the world that he has for us. He's seeking to bring his world to us so that we can share his world of love and joy and peace and hope with others. See, it's it's not about what you believe. It's about what you'll be living. Not simply believing, but what you'll be living. And for that to happen, two things have to take place. First of all, we've got to see what this kind of life looks like in action. And secondly, we've got to let him take action. That's why Jesus lived a whole life as one of us, from baby to adult to death to his resurrection. So that with him in charge, we could see what life was could be. Be under no illusion. Jesus' objective is is to establish his kingdom on this entire planet by reconciling people to God and to each other and spreading his system of peace sharing, of peace seeking, power sharing, creation care, welcome instead of fear. Jesus has come and he has put on notice every other ruler in this universe, whether they're Romans or Russians or Republicans. He's the only power worth bowing to because he's the only power that can be demonstrated and lived and enjoyed by even a baby. No one else has ever come close to Jesus because on our own, Even at our best moments, we are still a part of the problem. Jesus is resolved to dealing with the root of the dysfunction and the distortion that cripples and uh, and that obstructs human thriving. His method is to bring together people, to heal broken relationships between races, between genders, between ages, between social structures, between cultures, between families, even to bring together those who support Ford and those who support Holden. Jesus' plan is to bring people together, not by dominating people, but by forgiving their debt. Not by demanding a debt from them, but by forgiving the repentant. Not by disempowering people so they think less of themselves, but giving them genuine power so that they might think more of God and more of other people. It's time to slice into that first Christmas cake and discover that beyond its sentimental marzipan exterior, there actually lay something that is rich and powerful, something that is sensational and world-changing. Jesus came to change life as we know it. The question for us is, will we actually let him change ours? 
Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we recognise that what you came to establish isn't always what the church has promoted. Because you didn't want people to put their faith and their trust in the church. You wanted them to put their faith and their trust in you. And so, Lord, at Christmas time, we recognise that if we don't turn our eyes on you, then we're going to miss everything. And so here we are sitting in a church. And we pray that instead of seeing church, we might see you. That instead of thinking that you are about taking us away from all of this stuff, that you would, we would see that you are about changing all of this stuff. God, we recognise that it's got to start with us. And so this day... We pray that you will bring your power so that we might stop thinking less of others or thinking less of ourselves, but that we would start to see how much you think of us and how much you want to do for us. Lord, help us to realise that you're not God apart from us. You are God with us. This day we celebrate because of you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let's stand and sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. Let all their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy it rises in my soul never lets me go he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love joy unspeakable joy an overflowing well no tongue can tell joy unspeakable joy it rises in my soul never lets me go
Well, we made it. Let me leave you with these words. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Merry Christmas. Drive safely. See you on Sunday.